Welcome to Cute Widgets and More. Today is the day you all been waiting for. The day when you finally will understand every single part of that magic code I threw in your face. So uh, shall we get started? So the end goal of this whole thing is to implement the method transform. Transform takes a container, it takes a method and it runs the method on each of the elements on that container, which will transform them, hence the name. And it will put all these elements into a new container, which it will return. But the trick here is that we will not create a new container if the input container is an R value, meaning it's something that will be thrown away right after we've done with it. And if the input container and the result container is the same type. If that's the case, then we can actually reuse the input container to put the new values in. And that will give us a, an optimization because, well, we will not have to allocate space in that container during our operation. Shall we start looking at the transform just so we 100% clear everybody on what does the transform without this optimization look like? So what we're looking at is deep down in the stomach of KD algorithm, the library for, for algorithms that I've been programming up over summer. In there, it has the possibility of calling transform, where it not only changes the, the, the values or transform the values that comes in, but it also changes the container. So I might get a vector of ints in and spit out a DQ of ints. But it might also be that my that I spit out a vector and a, a vector in, a vector out. That's the case that I want to. Is the container the same type? And is the output container, the result container here, an R value? So what we have, it's that it's a template on three types. It's the result container, the input container, and the transform. And uh, it takes the input container and the transform as parameters here, and it spit out the result container. My non-optimized version would look like this. I create an instance of result container. I call transform on my container begin, my, my container end. So this is a the std version that takes two pointers, beginning and end, and back insert into the result. And then it called transform on each of those elements, returning the result in the end. And we can, we, let's just run it. So just validate that it actually works. Um, I'm here at transform basic 14916. So 1234, and I have the square function. I am transforming a list of integers, or that's my return type, std list of int, and my input is a std vector of int and the square. That's this method here, and it spit it out, and that gives me this uh, 14916. So just before we go and implement that optimized version, let's just look at the, the bits, the checking, if the two containers are the same. That's the type trait we implemented last time. And checking whether result container is an R value reference. We also saw, uh, saw that there is a std colon colon is R value reference in there. And with those two, we have our test. Let's look at the test out of context of the, of the final implementation. On line 33, you can see the test. It takes an input container and a result container. I check. Is this inline const expression bool my check one, v1, version one? You get the idea that there's going to be something wrong with it, but hey, hang in there. Don't read ahead. It says if std is the same v, so is same v, that's a boolean. Remember the colon colon value in our type traits. So this is a boolean, uh, the whole thing here. If my input container and the result container is the same container, then true or false, and and so that's a uh, regular C plus uh, plus ampersand ampersand version here. And std is our value reference input container. So we are saying that if the input container and the result container is the same thing, and my input container is an R value reference, then everything is cool. 
you get the feeling that uh, we are not going to be OK with this, right? Let's check. My check, V1. Take code type, stood move vex1. So I'm. it needs to be the, 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 the result container here and the input container. So my input container needs to be moved over for it to be an R value. So I'm moving vector one over. Now it's an R value. And I'm taking the tickle type of this whole thing and I'm checking the type of my vector two. So they should be the same. We have vector one and vector two. And as we print out here, check one, zero. So they are not the same. What on earth went wrong? I can show you the, the solution right away. Do you want to see that? Ah! Color us again right away when we were just getting to know. OK, what now? Yeah. So I was told to tell you why it's much more fun to see one of my coworkers in flesh rather than just sitting there comfortable at home watching me present stuff to you over YouTube or somebody else for that. Well, I'll tell you why. Because this is a one-way flow. There might be something you thought you understood, but you didn't. That breaks it for the rest of the episode or breaks your ability to actually use it. So in a perfect world, you would like that instructor to notice that you didn't really get it and explain to, to need, need, heard me, and explain it to you in many different ways until it was crystal clear how the cocks fitted together. I cannot see you. I try very hard, but I don't really see you out there. So you don't write me messages saying, yes, Burke, can you go back to, and even if you did, I would likely not have the time to help each and every single one of you. After all, this is for free. Training costs money, but it is that difference that makes it super, super cool to join a training. Up there is the link. Come on, join. Hey, I might one day be so good at C++ that you would even meet me. Otherwise, come to a cute witches training. There, I'll definitely be. The trick, you've seen it a couple of times already. I want to know the type. How do I print the type? Well, I print the type with this little thing. Template type name dot 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 struct pt for print type. Over here, I'll create an instance. Well, let's comment this uh, out here. Now, I'll create an instance of my pt of my input container. Yep. And uh, I'll instantiate that struct and make all the other errors go away. Let me just change the font just a tiny little bit in cpt std vector int double reference. OK. How about my result container? std vector int no double reference. So the problem is that one of them was a r value reference, the other was just the, the, the std vector int. So what I really need to do now is to move the r value reference from my input container. And uh, that was not the cut and paste that I expected. There we are. And I can do that by simply saying stut colon colon remove reference t like this. And now it gets even smaller. Can I scroll? I can scroll. Yeah. It's that small pens. Stud vector int, not stud vector r value reference. And that's what I want to do. And of course, uh, I just uh, nuke this uh, implementation here again so we can get it back in a compiling state. And you can see that's exactly what I do down here. I, I test whether is it the same, the remove reference on the input container and the result container, and is the result or is the input container an R value reference? And I run it and uh, check two is equal to one. That's check two of my VEC being moved over and my VEC two, so the tickle type of those. Three and four is uh, just to uh, check whether it actually works when it doesn't match. So here, VEC1 is uh, not moved over and VEC2, so they are same time, but it's not an R value. It's at, uh, it's at uh, no, that is not uh, check three here. No, check four, no. 
and check for test whether it is actually an a value but it's a list this time so stood list so it's not the same type either and um, had this been a slightly more modern version i could have used c plus plus 17 but in uh, kd algorithms i have limited myself to c plus plus 14 so that the kd algorithms is as useful to as many people as possible and therefore i cannot use this one here but here of course in this code i can so I can use std conjunction v, and that is just uh, the ampersand ampersand written with a bit more letters. Fortunately, it also lines up better in uh, with the Clang format, and you can see up here it said uh, it says is same v. Here it just says is same, and is r value reference, not is r value reference v. But that's uh, that's uh, the minor thing, of course. And you can see check six. I don't know what happened to check five. I'm just messing with you and check six. Hopefully it says, uh, yes, that is uh, the same. And so does the transform because what we really want to do is that we want to call transform with a return type here and give it uh, an input vector here. And uh, that's what we will be, uh, that's what we'll be doing up here, transform a result container, an input container, and of course there is the there is the uh, the method for transforming. But we threw that out here. My transform takes the input container reference reference. Uh, so this is a forwarding reference that we take here, and it tests whether it's the same the input container and the result container. And the only difference here is that the type of input container is now a uh, std vector. Uh, type of the input, that's the type of vec1, which is std vector int here. It is not std vector int reference, even though I moved it over here. And the reason why that is, is that, uh, uh, well, more than you it's, a, it's an R value reference. So, but I need to add this stuff here to actually get the, the reference back. Of course, we, we saw that it was a reference reference up there, but I threw that out for the input container. I could have had a variable and test for the type of that variable. And now I need to breathe. I'm, I still get amazed that I managed to write code like this after practicing and playing with uh, with the uh, templates uh, throughout a summer vacation. And uh, I'm actually pretty proud of myself. It's OK to, to give me a note underneath saying, hey, yes, but that's pretty cool. Uh, we are almost there now. I'll show you two versions now. I'll show you. An, C++ 17 version, and then I'll show you a C++ 14 version because the 17 version is using const expression if, which unfortunately isn't in C++ 14. And as I said, I limited myself to C++ 14 support because I want as many people to be on it as possible. Why not 11 years? But well, I did for a long time, but 11 and 14, you would be amazed how much improved C++ got between those. Why not uh, Cunningham Ritchie C++, Jesper? Oh. Let's get back to the code. We're now back at that code that I promised you at the beginning of this mini-series that you would understand. I ended up changing it slightly to be even better, but you'll, you'll recognize the code nevertheless. The code that I've been showing you a number of times is this here. But what I took is that I took the, the, the part of the const expression and took that out of here and put that into a, a templarized variable itself. So I have this inline const expression bool, items can be moved. And it's exactly this uh, expression that we've been building up in just before I ran out of breath. And uh, you can see items can be moved, is temporized on input container and result container. So now we have our transform with an input container and a transform and a result container there. And we say, if const expression items can be moved uh, v, so the value version, the boolean out of this thingy here, if they can be moved, that's cool. Then we will just be printing out, hey, we can move them. And we will be running transform on const container begin, container end, and container begin. See, I have my container here going from here to here, from beginning to end. But I also give it beginning as where it will 
put the, 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 the transform value. So it'll take the first value, it will send it through the machinery of my transform, and then it'll put it back into where the first value was. Go to the next value, and so it will update my, 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 my iterator for, for them. that started pointing at where it should read, and also update the iterator for where it should end. And that's uh, the whole reason why we did this stuff here. If I didn't have that item can be moved V, saying true up there, what I would do then is create a, an instance of result container and then just uh, stood transform with uh, my begin and my end and then back insert into my result container and I would return my result. There are two things that we're missing to explain entirely to understand this code. And I promise you, you would understand all of it. One is stood forward and the other is if const expression. Let's start with the stood forward. So what I get in here is what is called a universal reference. No, it's not. It was in the early days. It's called a forwarding reference. And the forwarding reference is either a, uh, a, a regular L value or it's an R value reference. So it could be a uh, const uh, whatever lambda expression reference, or it could be a const, uh, uh, it could be a non-const lambda expression R value reference. So either it's a, it's a value that has a name on the calling site or it's temporary. And what I want to do is that I'll take this one here and I want to call it on to the std transform. I'm not entirely sure what std transform does with this one, but in any case, if there was two different versions of std transform, one that took an L value and one that took an R value reference, then I would want it to maintain that so that it would call it onto the right version. And you're just like, what could possibly be, be different L value and R value? Well, you can see I have exactly the same issue with my, with my input container up here. If it is an R value reference, and I'll take a different code path than if it's an L value. And that's the, 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 the whole thing with between, between uh, uh, or the whole reason why we are forwarding so that it will maintain that value type, whatever it's called, whether it's an L value or an R value reference. That was the stood forward. Let's also look at the if const expression. What that basically does is that at compile time, it will look at this stuff here and it will decide, is it this one or is it this one? And let me just try and remove the const expression. Then it looks much more like a regular if but this is now at runtime. So when my compiler sees this, it says down here, you're calling transform with a, where the result type is a std list vector, and you're giving it a, a std vector, so two different types here, and I cannot possibly return. You have told me that the res result, the return would be a std list int. That's what you told me here. But now you are returning container, and I know container is a uh, is a std vector int. So you're returning a std vector in Jasper, and you told me it would be a std list. And I'm sorry, but I don't know how to turn how to make a vector into a list. But compiler, seriously, you'll never get in there unless they are the same. Well, the compiler doesn't know that at compile time. Of course, this is just a regular runtime if. But if I add the if const expression, then it's a compile time if rather than a runtime if. And then at compile time, my compiler will say, OK, so they are not the same. Let's take this code here and throw it out. Well, more code. I, am, I, I suck at cut and paste, and I suck at deleting code, it seems. Like this, and that will be the result that is sent through the compilation phases if they are not the same. If they are the same, well, then it's, uh, then it's this part that will be, be thrown out. That's what the if const expression is all about. I just realized that in the stood forward, I said that it's either an L value or an R value reference. Should, of course, have been more clear. I meant it's either an L value reference or an R value reference. So both of them are, of course, reference. This is C++17. What came around then was the if const expression. Before if const expression, what we have 
had to do back then. So in C++14 and back, we have to do something called tag dispatching that you'll see a lot of places. So let me show you that version too, just so that you can walk away from this and say, I know everything about the transform going on in KD algorithms, if that is a this goal in your life, or at least you have now seen enough C++ template meter programming so that you start feeling comfortable about reading such code. So what we see here in the C++14 version of it is that we have a transform that is calling upon another transform, namely the one in detail, colon, colon. That's the closest I at least can call as coding standard in, in the C++. That's stuff that isn't meant to be called from outside, but it's just to, to help her is go into this detail. Namespace, and we can see namespace detail up here. The detail transform takes an extra parameter. So not only does it take the result container, the input container, and the transform, but it also takes an extra one, uh, an extra parameter, which is a, an instance of a class. And uh, that is actually a class dependent on something. So the class tag up here is, if you look at all of this, you will start saying, hey, I've seen that before. That's the actual value here. And stood bool constant. You remember back in last episode when we talked about uh, type traits, that is one of those. It's, it's stood bool constant with true here is a complete different class than the stood bool constant with false. So they are two different, two different classes like int and char. So what I'm just doing here in this uh, tag dispatching is that I'm doing this test here that gives me either a, 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 a bool constant that is uh, false and a bool constant that is true. And one of those is implemented up here. So the other parameters are the same for both of them, but it's the class there. So here we have one transform that takes the container, the transform, and std colon colon false type. Yes, you need to think back to the last episode where we saw this std colon colon false type. It was we can just go over here and look at it. It is this integral constant bool and false, and an integral constant is this complex thing here that has the static const expression type value equal to v. So that is one kind of type because it's parameterized on the value up here. And the false, the, the one with, with false, which did I talk about, true or false? Well, they are two different types, entirely different types least to the compiler. So one is this one here, and one is that one. You'll notice that I don't even give it a name because I don't need it for anything. It's just this tag dispatching. And that's what's going on here. My C++14 version is calling transform, forwarding the container and the transform, and the type is given to that one too. And then it takes, create this tag. The tag decides whether it's this one or this one. This is the one where I can actually do my, my in-place replacement. And you'll notice the body is exactly the, the, the if part of my if const expression. And down here, it's the false part or the else part of my if const expression. And that, ladies and gentlemen, completes the mini series on template meter programming. It started for me just before my summer vacation where I got myself into that I needed to write a bit. And it got so excited that during my two weeks of vacation, where my kid and wife, kids and wife were sleeping in long, I got up six o'clock in the morning because I was so eager to learn more about this. And I'd like to make a shout out here, just a special thank you to Evan Kukik, who mentored me throughout of all of this. I had enormous amount of of uh, compile errors that I just didn't understand. I had enormous amount of times where I needed a nudge in the right direction, and he very helpfully helped me with that. I'd also like to make another shout out to Sebastian Springer, uh, who have been with me all day long. Every single video I record here it takes a long time. I've been recording this mini series all day long now, and he has been watching every single snippet that I've been recording just to make sure that I didn't run out of something eventually in there. So uh, 
send him your love in the uh, comments below. Send both of them your love. And uh, I'll be back next week with something more cutish, I'm sure. I have no idea what I'm going to record next. But uh, let me know your thoughts. And uh, until then, 